Well, let's yeah, let's move into yep. some AFL lads. Now, my gripe with the AFL this week, and I've spoken about it before, these clashing matchups. Yeah. When you don't have a Thursday night game, and as fans of both the NRL and I, the I NFL, will say there is a caveat to here. It gives me an excuse to get get into the misses about buying a second TV and setting uh, two get, TVs up. Two, <laughs> two, uh, well, start you know, part. you know, with smart TVs these days, I'm sure there is some well, kind picture, of yeah, picture, some kind picture, of picture in picture. Yeah, but I want I want you know the sixty five and the sixty five. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> First world problems. Most of all, sports pod, sports. Sports oh, I'm that guy. To to today, Sean, you can't talk. <laughs> no, I can't. I'll from Peps. <laughs> uh, at least it wasn't someone's name. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, true. Uh, um, at, at Harper Morgan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, right names, wrong order. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> Neither are good. Anyway, as yeah. uh, the possibly Jeez. the best speaker of three, rare, not very no, good speakers. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the whole uh, TAB setup in the mm. in the house would be a nice little setup. Maybe it's something that we could do in a little man cave mm. yeah, in a basement. True, true. Maybe. Uh, anyways, always fun <laughs> taking the piss out of each other and our lack of <laughs> you know speaking English abilities. Yes. Now, yeah. so but we still don't like the fact that AFL is playing games back to well over the top of each other in parallel. And the, your big clash uh, in a lot of places. We live in Canberra. The Ron mm. Barassi line. We talk about it. You know mm. that that line that separates NRL and AFL. We live right on it. Uh, probably just sort of leaning. You know, a little bit leggy. Yeah, if the AFL, you know, wants to grow that market, you know, in places like but Canberra, yeah, you can give them a game in Monica. But I think, you know, competing against rugby league and putting games on Thursday nights would be yeah. smarter than having these, con- you know, um, conflicting schedules. Uh, and we are, of course, talking about the Friday night schedules. Yeah, well, either that or play, you know, more games on Saturday and Sunday. It's just Or play, you've got a late game in Perth. Play one straight after the other. The yeah. fact that one, like, it, they start one and it's half time and then the other one starts, mm. that's real weird. Like, you. Well, there's, the, the, there's the, also the, nothing the cricket, wrong. The cricket's a good example in the Big yeah. Bash League, where if they want to have a double header and they want people, you know, it's Friday night, and if mm. you want to watch both, you can stay up a little bit later. And on the East Coast, you've got, you know, a six o'clock or 6 30 start for the first yeah. game. And then over on the West Coast, you start like 9, 9.30 yeah. on yeah. the East Coast. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You could do it like that and, ta- and kind of take that yeah. mould that the, that the Big Bash sort of does. You, you can play morning weekend games as well. Like, start oh, no, mo- yeah, but morning's not a mutt. Like, no. Like what, starting at 11 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. But no. you, that's when Rezzy's got to go play. Yeah. Man. I don't. <laughs> that's true, it. I don't want to miss my, my reserve grade <laughs> game and then and yeah. then miss the footy as well. I I, just, I don't think there's a market there. I think the smartest thing to do is to is to compete directly with the NRL and play Thursday night games. Or if you if you want to do, well, it's not really a competition. NRLs usually put in garbage games on Thursday night anyway. <laughs> that is <laughs> true. At, at the Gold Coast Titans well, versus put, the West Tigers. Put your garbage game on Thursday. Just get it out of the way and instead of. In parallel, where but it's shit, not getting I, watched. Thursday night, you're starting to get horny for the weekend. I'd I like to see good matchups like, on a yeah. Thursday night. Yes, it sometimes if for the working man that has to be up early, it can finish a little bit late. But it, it just gives you that little bit of excitement that the weekend's coming. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, Gil McLaughlin, if you're listening, I'm sure you <laughs> you care. Uh, let's talk about those Friday night games. Uh, the Port Adelaide Power won their third in a row after their dismal 0 and five start. Uh, Travis, good bloke, uh, pretty good as usual, 30 disposals and a sausage roll. Three to Jeremy Finlayson, two to Robbie Gray, Todd Marshall and Sam Powell Pepper. Uh, the dogs, they slipped to three and five. What are, mm. What's going on with the Western Bulldogs? Well, that's that's the conversation after the, the power started uh, so poorly. They've won three straight, haven't they? Yeah, they have. Yep, so yep. they've kind of maybe starting to turn their season around and need to win uh, a l- lot more than they can lose from here. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, the dogs on the I other I wonder hand. if anyone's ever made the finals from the own five start. Not Carlton. Um, <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the kind of different trajectories here for these two mm. uh, with the with the doggies. And you'd think with, with the squad the dogs have, they should be doing better. They played in a grand final last year. Uh, Bailey Smith, mm. Jack McRae, is, Marcus is it, hang- is it the hangover? Belly. Is it a bit of a hangover? Yeah, get, well, Melbourne's not having much of a hangover. Yeah, well, getting, well, getting pumped, I guess. And, well... And we're losing against – we're getting dominated essentially in a grand final and not being, uh, you know, as competitive as you're probably hoping to be yeah, in that grand yeah, final. Yeah, and it, it, all, it all was second half. Yeah, as well. exactly. Yeah, so, maybe. But you do look at that list and, and you think, geez, they, they could be 
you know. Well, we thought they were top four squad. Like yeah, they should be. That I midfield is unbelievable. Maybe it's a problem they've got too many, too many, and they just can't put the chemistry together. Oh, I think I think they've played mm. a pretty tough schedule. Could could have something to do with it True. as well. But think they'd be beating a couple of those guys. You well, want them, you want them to be. Well, in they they game. played Melbourne round one. Beat yeah. Sydney. That's they good. beat Sydney, who who are pretty good. Um, where were we in round four? Lost to Richmond. Richmond. You know, yep. former dynasty team, smack the kangaroos, water wet. That, Losing that, the Crows was probably that. Yeah, that right. one point loss to the Crows probably hurts. Beat the Bombers. Look, like, and th- that's a thing as well. Consistency when yeah. you're kind of going loss, win, win loss, loss yeah. win loss, and the rest of it. Uh, they played Collingwood actually this Friday. That'll be a good match up for them. Mm. Um, need uh, to ride the ship. I yeah, need to ride the ship indeed. If only there was a mad Western Bulldogs fan that could come give us some <laughs> insights <laughs> <laughs> at Chrome Dome if you're listening. Um, Friday, well, halfway through the this game, <laughs> the other game started out west. Yeah. Uh, and, and ended very, very quickly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Freo spanked uh, the North Melbourne Kangaroos, 102 to 24 a few points. This week. Yeah. Yes. Uh, usual suspects yeah. for Freo in Andrew Brayshaw, uh, 34 disposals, looking pretty good in Brownlow votes, I'd imagine. Mm-hmm. Caleb Sarong, uh, 27 for him. Sean Darcy, we always talk about yep. him emerging as an elite ruckman. 17 disposals, 42 hitouts, and a sausage roll uh, dominating uh, against uh, Todd Goldstein, who is probably. Sort of getting towards the end of his career. Mm. Uh, Jai Amis had his debut, uh, went yeah. eighth overall in the draft, kicked two goals on Debut. Uh, so, very good for the East Perth product. Now, I saw something on the socials uh, comparing the average age and average games played between these two teams, very similar. Mm-hmm. I think the average games was uh, in about 70 and the average age was about 23. Obviously, the output. Yeah, very very different. So both young lists, uh, both in very different situations. No one thought Frio would be this good. Admittedly, yeah, only losing Se- one game at this point. Seven and one. That's over yeah. from where we thought they'd be. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, a lot of the chat is, you know, are they the real deal? Are they going to be able to, you know, go uh, and lock horns uh, with a with a didn't, Melbourne? Yeah, well, didn't we look at this? They've got a few coming up that will probably. They play, uh, show they play the Suns of. next week. Yeah, uh, should, should the Western Bulldogs, week. who we were just talking about, that you know that'll be a cracker. Uh, f- they play then they play Melbourne Demons round eleven, so that might be the that's, li- that that's, might be the litmus test. Um, I, w- I was thinking about this during the week. If for whatever reason uh, the Dockers and say the Lions get to the grand final, uh, considering uh, what the Dockers team could have been, because Lockie Neal almost went back there this off season. The Lockie Neal uh, grand final matchup, yeah, <laughs> with, a, the, with a massive choke from the Melbourne Demons. Yeah, well, well yeah. <laughs> true, true. To get to that point, yes, the the D's would have to. Have Mate, we to think. Remember, I, I remember just, the run that the Melbourne Storm were on last year? They yeah. didn't play in a grand final. You, yeah. s- you have to win those prelims, eh? But to, to, to think that you know, potentially Lockie Neal could end, could win a grand final with the Lions over the Dockers, who he. Uh, potentially could have ended up at the start of the season and potentially will be there next year. Um, it's, uh, I was just like, Ooh. some tasty bit of storylines there, but we're weeks and weeks away from that. It is interesting. It is very mm. interesting. Those next three weeks uh, will really give us a, a nice good grasp on where Fremantle uh, at. Don't count out the Gold yep. Coast Suns. We'll get to them in just a second. Uh, yesterday, the early um, game uh, was Richmond Tigers uh, beating Collingwood. Uh, 64,000 in at the G, if you don't mind, on a Saturday afternoon between these two yeah. big Melbourne clubs. Was Dusty back? No, not yet. Uh, not yet. Uh, see if you can find any articles from this week. I'm sure there's uh, probably something yeah. written. Uh, I think he's close. I think he's close to, but again... Who knows? It's essentially yeah, a personal it's, decision. It it's not yeah. like healing tissue. Um, no, agree. Yeah. Well, it kind of is like healing tissue. Actually, the the brain is tissue. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a mental thing versus a physical thing. Harder to put timelines on those. Mm-hmm. Now, someone that would be feeling pretty good mentally would be Tom Lynch. He currently leads the Coleman race. Um, he's in some great nick after booting seven. Um, was it last week or the week before? Booted six this week, uh, 25 disposals, 11 marks for a key forward. That is absolutely redonkulous. And big Toby, Nank the Tank, Nankervis, had himself a day with no Brody Grundy, unfortunately, for Collingwood. Um, did his PCL on Anzac Day. They're looking at well, a, a good portion of the rest of the season for, for their star, Ruckman. Tolls and knee injuries don't go well. No. Um, so uh, Nank the Tank had 23 
Uh, disposals, 33 hitouts going up against Darcy Cameron in the ruck, who normally p- plays a chop out role for Brody Grundy and plays mm. as a key forward. Mm. Um, Richmond starting to get their season back on track, um, I think, after a little bit of a sloppy start. And Collingwood, a lot of people were saying that they would be sort of cellar dwellers or, you know, not that good this year. They sit ninth, and yeah. Richmond sits eighth. Yeah. So mid tier, I think that mid tier, both mid tier. Yeah, yeah. They've, they've kind of lived up to that. Yeah, Richmond potentially could go further um, based on whether Dusty can uh, gets back in the squad. Imagine, imagine yeah, yeah, Dusty comes back, and you know he, he played. Yeah, I, th- I thought oh, he played he this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah Pepe. Fuck up. Well, sorry, <laughs> sorry, man. I'm oh, sorry. I was at a baby shower. No. I didn't. I was I didn't. Like, I'm sure I heard the chat that Dusty played, and, yeah. and, oh, well. and then you shut me down. I was like, well, you watch more than I do. So <laughs> I was at, yeah, I'll, yeah, making excuses now, but there oh. you go. Dusty was back. Fair play. Uh, that's a, that's. Can a you give some stats. Give some stats <laughs> yeah. for Dusty. I uh, was two and one, twenty three disposals, fifteen. You kicked two goals, Pep. <laughs> <laughs> I was celebrating new life. I didn't catch it. <laughs> Sue me. There's there's someone that writes at Frank the there's, Tank. There's at Frank the Tank at Devon Booker, another clanger. There's someone that writes ninety eight percent of these notes. The other two blokes on my left and right could fucking sit down for five minutes on their laptop and help out. No, that is true. It's better when we stitch that you up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Dusty yeah. plays all right. Yeah, the the best player in the AFL for the last ten years played yesterday. I missed it. I mean, you you. Close at the start. You said it was very close to return. <laughs> very close as in yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Well, anyway. So, Richmond, Richmond get the job there. Uh, the Gold Coast uh, beating Sydney. What did you boys think of that? The Suns actually getting an upset here. So, well, the uh, Suns are one to upset a few teams. Um, Carlton being, being one. They've got, they've got talent in that squad. Everyone, they're, 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 not, they're not like where, say, West Coast were this week, uh, playing a reserve grade squad. Um, or where, like, say, the Kangaroos are playing a very young squad. They've got developed well, talent yeah, there. Well, the well, well, Gold Coast is all these young stars, mm. like, you know, in, in your Matt Rowles and you took Miller. Yep. So I took Miller's not that, that young. But then you've also got these old rejects, essentially, from, <laughs> from, from <laughs> uh, other clubs yeah. in Hot Boy, Levi, Casbolt and, uh, and Marbio Chol. Uh, they're, they're key forwards and they're going out there and – and beating Sydney Swans, who we're talking about sneaky premiership. Dark horse, yeah. yeah. Dark horse, yeah. So if there's a team that loves a, a, an upset and a, a tip killer and a multi-killer, it's the Gold Coast Suns. Yeah. But, good, but good on them too. Yeah, well. I'll, I'll ask James this question. Did Buddy play in this game or was he managed? <laughs> Buddy did play. There you go. <laughs> uh, the joys of trying to follow 10 sports at once, huh? Yes. Yep. Yeah, and someone wants to talk about the fucking hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus hey, Christ. Stanley Cup rides on. Oh, yeah. That's a long-running run, esky joke, so there we yeah, go. Yeah, long-running. Yeah. Go yeah. back through our archives to see where that's at. <laughs> For some shit ice cream <laughs> chat. <laughs> <laughs> These Stanley Cup playoffs are underway at the moment. Yes, yes. go Avs. Number one seed. <laughs> uh, from the Stanley Cup to Reese Stanley, Geelong, yes, segues. Mm, uh, nice. Didn't play in this one, I don't think. Uh. Um, Mark Blitzavs. What, hap- what happened to the Giants in this one? They got, they got demolished and <laughs> Blitzavs, I think, had to play in the ruck uh, uh, because they didn't, they didn't have a ruckman. Uh. Um, and it didn't fucking matter because they destroyed GWS here in Canberra. Jeremy Cameron, he hammered his old team, booting five, four, I think, on the left foot snap, one on the right. Um, very, very dangerous, uh, marking in the pocket um, and, and finishing strong. Um, the Cats, they are five and three, you know, a lot of speculation around. Exactly is, where I think they Is their they're list too old and this and that? Well, no, nah, mm. they're old, but they're superstars. Um, and, yeah, the Giants, after being pretty Promising last week against the Crows in maybe resurrecting their season, they're reeling at two and six. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I don't think Giants were going to trouble any of the big squads this year. Yeah, um, I, and, and Geelong, like they they are, like you say, an older squad, but they they'll win over sixty percent of their matches this year, and they'll be there in in the finals mm. in some capacity. I thought the Giants would be a little bit better, a little bit better, especially with Toby Green back. I thought Toby well, Green, that yeah, a make, makes a but. huge. Huge difference. We spoke at length last week about you know him coming back and the injection that he has into that squad. Um, yeah, disappointing, disappointing uh, showing from the Giants. There, freezing cold in Canberra. Mm. May maybe that was the problem. 
Uh, guys from out west in Sydney there. <laughs> there were well, you wouldn't still have people, yeah. yeah I Geelong's, Geelong's, Geelong's travelling up. Yeah, I probably. suppose Geelong can get a little bit chilly. Um, but yeah, nice May conditions <laughs> yesterday <laughs> in, in the nation's capital. Well, it cold. wasn't it was quite the it wasn't quite the snow that we've seen no. in, in previous. It was cold. Previous yesterday. times today, today yeah. it was cold yesterday. Monks, your bombers got over Hawthorne. What do you, did you think of yeah. that? Yeah, uh, I've got to confess, I did not watch the game. <laughs> So perhaps you're still doing better than I am. Yeah, thanks. Man. <laughs> <laughs> At least I watched my teams this weekend. <laughs> Didn't see Dusty, so no. apologies to Dusty. Um, Monks have been playing with a puppy all day. So we'll yeah, we'll new puppy. Yeah. New puppy. Yeah, new puppy. Yeah, cute little um, fella. Wedge. As yep, in not, wedge. As in, what, what's the angle on it? 60 degree? <laughs> 58 degree wedge? Yeah, I that. thought you were going with – that was going to be a good joke there. Like, what's the angle of the name you're going for yeah. with Wedge? But yeah, yeah. That's it's a golf cool reference. Yeah, that was good enough. Out of, yeah. out of something that I can't hit very well. <laughs> anyway, they beat Hawthorne. It, it, who it, it's a club in the bag, so yeah, yeah, I, can't, yeah. I can't hit it that well. Um, Bombers, Bombers beat Hawthorne. Hawthorne, yeah. who had been probably playing a bit overs. Overs, yeah, yeah, I reckon, yeah. I reckon so. Young uh, mate, squad. Well, that's, that's half the reason why I didn't really – Pay too much attention. I thought going up against Hawthorne, they probably wouldn't really get it done. Yeah, recent form, um, yeah. recent form, but two yeah. meter Peter, he kicked uh, six. Big Peter Wright had yeah. himself a night. I'm a poet, and I didn't know it. Uh, well, <laughs> no one saw anything. I saw quick highlights on that game. So yeah, Monks might have to watch your team next week. Yes, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Into a man that did watch his team or yes. most of it last night. Oh. Had a pretty handy win. Uh, yeah. The Brisbane Lions uh, coming out 75-point winners over the West Coast Eagles. Uh, a lot of s- sort of talk during the week about uh, the line in this game and the fact that the Eagles were going to miss six to eight players with the COVID. Mm. Well, uh, what did they have, the 22 list? Yeah, they had, they had 22 AFL-listed players available. Yeah. So everyone, everyone <laughs> unless they wanted to play a VFL player, everyone on their AFL list had to play. Yeah. Um, so pretty hard going up against it. Although, and we've spoken about it before, a lot of those listed players are premiership winners yeah, from only four years ago. They've got talent. So, so you know, maybe the aging kind of stuff needs to get directed more at, at more at West Coast than yeah. Geelong. Agree, agree. What was your take on this one? Um, well, I think Flying Ryan was the best for West Coast. I think yeah, he got Flying three. Ryan, he three yeah. yeah, he got three for them. So he is for Flying, and he is yeah. Ryan. Uh, but yeah, I think the the rain probably saved uh, West Coast in this one. Uh, yeah, if because it, it, mm. it was a very slow and sloppy start to the game, a lot of playing around inside the West Coast is like fifty area. Um, but yeah, you couldn't really turn that into points, and I, it kind of I think it eased a little bit in the second half, and then Brisbane ran away with it. Um, could have been uh, a lot, lot more points had there been a little bit more, uh, you know. Drier conditions, dry, yeah, dry, yeah, dry fast, track, fast them. track. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if someone who, they get punted by seventy, and we we're saying that that was probably unders, you could see what the expectation was. For well, if someone who punted on this game <laughs> wanted to check the fucking weather, <laughs> yeah. maybe I wouldn't have taken them minus ninety nine and a half, <laughs> uh, which was paying a juicy four dollars twenty. I believe we made the wrong one. assumption uh, that yeah, playing Brisbane yeah. Gabba would be hot, yeah. nice and dry, ready to. And go. a little bit of AFL NRL crossover chat. Magic round meant to be absolute. Absolutely pissing down. <laughs> so, uh, me and my punters club. Hopefully, no there. floods in Brisbane. Why there? Hopefully, no floods. Byo Hopefully. canoe to the swamp <laughs> down yeah. Caston Street. <laughs> A few swamp rats uh, aboard the the canoe. Yeah. I'll yes. sit here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as well, no episode next week, uh, but some hmm. maybe some live vids on the on the uh, socials on the socials. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that'll be high quality <laughs> viewing. <laughs> Uh, Melbourne can p- continue their unbeaten streak. Yep. The only mm. unbeaten squad in Australia currently. Well, <laughs> there's a huge caveat. Professional yeah. big league. Yeah. Some Professional big league, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I think we looked at most of them and well, they most were, of them were in finals now. Yeah, exactly. And some of those have already had losses. So yeah, I think yeah. these could potentially be very close to, the, as in top grade professional sports, being the only undefeated team currently. Because um, we checked the rugby, we checked the, we even checked the netball, I believe, and there was we did, no one we did, we did. there. So, yep. uh, so yeah, good on them. Keep their streak rolling. Got over the St Kilda here. Um, did it easy by all accounts. Yeah, like shout out to St Kilda with you know not getting absolutely pumped. It, was, mm. it had a lot of uh, kind of vibes of that Melbourne um, Melbourne Hawthorne game as well, mm-hmm. where you know. You know, kudos for, for yeah, not getting completely yeah. blown out. They still lost by quick mass, 38 points. Mm-hmm. Uh, three goals for Big Ben Brown, three goals for Cozzy Pickett. Look, 
talking about the Melbourne Demons is like talking about the Melbourne Storm at the mm-hmm. at the moment. Mm-hmm. I suppose. Well, no, it's not quite the same because you've got Penrith. You've got a clear grand final matchup starting to form in the NRL. Yeah, well, who's two Brisbane are two at the moment. I yeah, think. and I don't think it's the same comparison. No, I, no, I, no, I don't no, think yeah. it's Brisbane the same are playing really well. Same but comparison. It's free. It's free. It's free. Technically free. Yeah. Yeah. yeah free. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's, it's free on Brisbane kind of. Yeah, but a, well, they're both seven and one. It's just percentage. Yes, yes. Mm. Uh, but yeah. it's yeah. yeah. I don't think it's quite the same comparison to yeah. to like the professional NFL. kind of like sure. that level of you know long time dominance at the top there, as we see with the Storm and Penrith. So. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Um, and Carlton getting a big win in the late game on Sunday, hundredth uh, career goal for Charlie Kernow. Can you bring up the um, stats from that one? How many he kicked in the end? Uh, obviously, the third and fourth quarters unplaying, uh, unfolding, I should say, um, whilst whilst we were live on air. Uh, Charlie Kernow is, had to be one of the most unlucky guys uh, for quite some time last year. He went through uh, knee dislocations, mm-hmm. ongoing ligament problems, mm-hmm. a few head knocks. Um, he was the third overall draft pick back in 2015, 2016, something like that. And just always looks like a superstar when, when he's fit and healthy and just hasn't really had a nice, long, fit yeah. and healthy run. Yep. So mm-hmm. as a Blue Bagger fan, really good to see him back in form, kicking goals, kicking his 100th goal. Did he? Oh, yeah. well, he finished with six. Six, yeah. Yeah. Pretty pretty <laughs> handy. Thanks very much. Yeah. And shout out to uh, Big H, Big Harry Mackay. He kicked three uh, Pepsi's. Uh, uh, it's like the money back multi on the weekend where you're kind of going at a yeah, sort right. of three to one, four to one multi to try and win your money back. Yeah. Chase like. your losses, etc. They can't <laughs> run for it ever, etc., etc. Not your luck. <laughs> thank, thank you to uh, Charlie Kernow, Harry Mackay, Carlton, and Patrick Cripps for getting that one home uh, to yeah get back a little bit of cash. 